Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So for years, I have talked about our composting humanure system on the homestead. And for years, I have read the comments um, down below of people who think that's crazy. They're just like, why? Why, Zach? Why do this? Um, and I, I make the case, you know, lot, there's lots of reasons why. And I continue to be proven right. Always. <laughs> Time proves me right. Um, number one, I have these things because it's self-sustaining. I don't rely on a third party. I don't have third party counter risk when it comes to my waste disposal. <laughs> you do. If you are relying on a sewer system to take away your undesirables, then you're relying on someone else to do that job for you. Okay. I don't, I do that here. I save it. And then we, we let it break down <clears throat> and mature over the course of an entire year. And then it's applied uh, on our landscaping that we have here around the homestead. Um, fatbergs are a huge issue that have happened that, that have occurred over, especially the last couple of years because of all, I mean, remember the, the, the toilet paper shortages and all, and all the, uh, wet wipe shortages and all this stuff like that. People were using anything and everything, everything they could to wipe and put that down the toilet system. And it caused massive congestion throughout the sewer systems in America and around the world in Western societies like uh, London and other places. Um, and they called these things fatbergs, these gigantic masses of stuff that just gets stuck in the sewer systems. And it takes sometimes cranes to lift them out. It's, it's a tax, a huge taxing burden on the system. And when the grid goes down, and it will <laughs> at some point, uh, you're not going to have a sewer anymore. You're not going to have a working toilet in your home. In fact, eventually it's going to push back because of these fatbergs, because people will be using whatever they can to wipe and dispose of their waste systems until it doesn't work anymore and it'll cause massive backups and that all comes back up into the homes eventually it's been proven so what do you do we have a humanure composting toilet system on this homestead and people have laughed at it well just a few weeks ago i haven't done a video on it i want to do it today um <laughs> just a few weeks ago it was put out with some scientists they wanted to test with lasers lasers um, how to look at all of the stuff that comes up out of the toilet in the atmosphere when you flush every time you flush. Here's the video. So all of these news organizations picked up this information when it was put up by scientists. It was part of a study or whatever that got released and they ran with it and they were shocked to discover that no, this is not just to the type of toilets that you see in the public restrooms, these pressure toilets. No, every toilet does this. There have been lots of studies out there that showing throughout the years how fecal matter ends up on your toothbrush because you keep your toothbrush in the bathroom where you flush the toilet and fecal matter is on your toothbrush. It, it, it's been proven. And this is not just for some homes. No, this is for every home because it floats around in the bathroom every time you flush. And yes, you can keep your lid closed. You know, people do that, but it doesn't stop all of it. It's still, you will still find fecal matter that has floated around your bathroom, even if you close your toilet lid. You all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? You all laughed at the guy with the composting toilet. <laughs> um, anyway, let's read the article. Coming from CBS News, toilets spew invisible aerosol plumes with every flush and scientists use high-powered lasers to illuminate and photograph them. Uh, it says, every time you flush a toilet, it releases plumes of tidy water droplets in the air around you. These droplets, called aerosol plumes, can spread pathogens from human waste and expose people in public restrooms to contagious diseases. Scientists' understanding of the spread of aerosol plumes and public awareness of their existence have been hampered by the fact that they are normally invisible. My colleagues Aaron True, Carl Linden, Mark Hernandez, Lars Larson, Anna Pauls, and I were able to use high-powered lasers to illuminate these plumes, enabling us to image and measure the location and motion of spreading aerosol plumes from flushing commercial toilets in vivid, vivid, ladies and gentlemen, detail. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> uh, you're like, ew. Ew. 
Toilets are designed to efficiently empty the contents inside the bowl through a downward motion into the drain pipe. In the flush cycle, water comes into forceful contact with the contents inside the bowl and creates a fine spray of particles suspended in the air. In the air. In air. We found that a typical commercial toilet generates a strong upward jet of air with velocities exceeding 6.6 .6 feet per second meters, or yeah, feet per second, uh, two meters per second, rapidly carrying these particles up to five feet above the bowl within eight seconds of the start of the flush. To visualize these plumes, we set up a typical idleness, I'm sorry, lidless commercial toilet with, toilet with flushometer style valve found throughout North America in our lab. Flushometer valves use pressure instead of gravity to, to direct water into the bowl. We use special optics to create thin vertical sheet of laser light that illuminated the region from the top of the bowl to the ceiling. After flushing the toilet with a remote electrical trigger, the aerosol particles scatter enough laser light to become visible, allowing us to use cameras to image the plume of particles. Even though we expected to see these particles, we were still surprised by the strength of the jet ejecting the particles from the bowl. A related study, I told you there was more studies, used a computational model of an idealized, idealized toilet to predict the formation of aerosol plumes with an upward transport of particles at speeds above the bowl approaching 3.3 feet per second, one meter per second, which is about half of what we observed with a real toilet. Scientists have known for decades, they see they've known this for decades, see I've known it for at least a decade, that flushing toilets can release aerosol particles into the air. However, experimental studies have largely relied on devices that sample the air at fixed locations to determine the number and size of particles toilets produce. While these early approaches can confirm the presence of aerosols, they provide little information about the physics of the plumes, what they look like, how they spread, and how fast they move. This information is critical to develop strategies to mitigate the formation of aerosol plumes and reduce their capacity to transmit disease. As an engineering professor whose research focuses on interactions between fluid physics and ecological or biological processes, my laboratory specializes in using lasers to determine how various things are transported by complex fluid flows. In many cases, these things are invisible until we illuminate them with lasers. Interesting article. You can keep reading. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but they go through. They basically go through this and, and they talk about it a little bit more. Uh, the quite the, here's here's the deal, folks. Don't doubt me. <laughs> Composting toilets are a very very safe and effective way of getting rid of your waste. Um, when you put this waste, uh, we compost our waste with um, uh, wood chips and with hay. And we basically uh, take the wood chips and we cover up our waste inside of our uh, disposal area in the bathroom, in our toilet. And then we take that, we put that outside in a bin, um, and then we cover that with hay. And the combination of carbon and nitrogen will create heat and will kill any pathogens, anything nasty, bacteria that's located in that waste product. And it will continue. When it's full, okay, we have these bins and we fill these bins full. And after a year, they're almost less than half the size of what they were because it is all cooked down. It has been cooked. It cooks itself. Carbon and nitrogen coming together with the bacteria that's present already in the waste will create heat. And it cooks. It's a very, very safe, effective way to dispose of your waste products. See, this is something you want to keep in mind because if the reality hits of what we all think is coming and you don't have that waste system, that water management, you know, utility that takes away your undesirables from you each and every day, then you might want to think about, oh, an alternative way to get rid of your waste and properly and effectively, safely manage it. This is not rocket scientists. There are plenty of universities out there that have been doing studies on this for years. Plenty of these are online for YouTube download or for a PDF download on Google or whatever. And lots of videos on YouTube like I have done throughout the years talking about it. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. I was right yet again. <laughs> I, like, I like telling you when I'm right about something. Sometimes I'll tell you about when I'm wrong about something, but it doesn't happen all that often. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. All right, um, 
<laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, check out our merchandise, teespring.com. Uh, our Stupid Shit Hurt shirt is absolutely our best seller, but this one gives me the most comments when I wear it out in public. Uh, people always want to come up and talk to you about prepping. Um, they want to tell you what they're doing. They want to, hey, wh- you know, what do you think about this? It's a great conversation starter. Um, I love prepping. Also available in links in the description below from teespring.com. Pick it up if you want one. Great makes a great gift for you or a loved one. Also, check out our merchandise, our, our advertiser, go, uh, the, the Genesis Gold Group. Have you, have, you, have you seen the economy lately going into 2023? <laughs> you might, if you have a 401k or an IRA and you're watching it and you're just like, yeah, they can help you get that locked 401k, locked IRA, getting into something else that's locked away for you that's physical. I, I would not be, in, if it was me, my personal opinion, I wouldn't want to be in any, any paper denominated assets right now. All right. But they can help you do it. Ad coming up next. All right, guys. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. This is grandma. Grandma survived the Great Depression. She survived the Great Depression because her supply chain was local and she knew how to do stuff. Grandma was smart. Grandma told us to make do with what you got. She also said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Homesteading is all about self-reliance and declaring ourselves to be independent from the system. We grow our own food, we raise our own animals, and doing these things help safeguard our families from the unpredictable world that surrounds us. But what about banking? I love being my own power company, but what about being my own bank? Right now, our country is over $30 trillion in debt and rising. The Fed keeps printing money and the Congress won't stop spending money. Staying attached to the modern banking system and their investment vehicles is like putting all of your eggs in one very, very fragile basket. On one side, you have the threat of inflation and your savings value floating away. And the other side is a possible deflationary stock market collapse, just like what happened in the 1930s. Genesis Gold Group is like a basket holding eggs, and these eggs are impossible to break. History shows us that all paper investments have and will return to their intrinsic value eventually. Zero. But gold, silver, and other precious metals have never, ever been worthless. In every collapse throughout history, people have turned back to precious metals to find monetary value. If you have a 401k, an IRA, or a savings account where you're literally watching the purchasing power inflate away, give Genesis Gold Group a call right now, today, this instant. They can develop a strategy for you in the days ahead. I can tell you how I raise sheep, I can tell you how I raise chickens, or the best way to grow tomatoes, or how to hook up a solar panel. But Genesis Gold Group is your best shot at safeguarding your hard-earned savings and investments during this increasingly turbulent time in history. The link and phone number is in the description below or visit their website at genesisgoldgroup.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.